Oh man, this one hurts, man. Yo, Jesus Christ, man. Yo, recipes to the smooth assassin, aka Granddad IU, man. Recipes to that brother, man. Definitely one of my favorite um MC slash producers. Um, yeah, that dude was official, man. Like um, one of the one of those cats that's like last but dying breed. He was definitely one of those cats. You know what I mean? He pretty much said what came to his mind. He he gets no fucks about it. You know what I'm saying? So. And that's one thing I respected about him. And he was a dope MC, a dope producer, too. Um, but I also want to kind of give, like, an overview of an underrated album, which is his second album, Lead Pipe, that came out in 1994. So, um, before I get into the album, like I said, it's not a review. It's more of an overview. Um, I'm just going to pretty much give, like, a chronological order of his history, and that kind of thing, or like a little, 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 little summary of his um, disc, of his biography, and then going to lead on to this album to 1994. All right, so you know, you guys know he was uh, part of Cold Chillin Records. You know, he's part of the, I guess even like an affiliate of the Juice Crew. You know, people say he's an affiliate. Some people say he's part of the Juice Crew. I say he's he's part of the Juice Crew. You know, what I mean, if same shit, whatever. But anyways, um. You know, put out a classic album, Smooth Assassin, um, in 1990. But, you know, before that, you know, he had an OG that, you know, like, kind of more like a mentor in a sense that kind of told him to switch up his um approach as far as, like, his dress, like, his dress code and that kind of thing. You know, because, you know, back in the 80s, you know, it was all about the track suits and, you know, the, the gazelles and, not the, well, this is late 80s, so... You know, the track suits, you know, and all that stuff, like the street shit that was, you know, popping at the time. Polo, triple, triple fat goose, you know, things like that. But his man was like, yo, nah, you should um do the suit and tie rap, you know what I mean? And, you know, you know come with a different approach. And it definitely worked for him because um, it was definitely different. He was, like, more laid back, but he was, you know, lethal with the lyrics. He was dope, you know what I'm saying? And, like I said, he dropped the um, first album, um... Smooth Assassin, 1990, classic album. I wish my I had my hands on that album, but that album goes for stupid money. It's always, it's always been expensive. I've had a couple of times to buy it, but I just never picked up on it. Now that shit goes for like a, over 100 bucks, 60 bucks, and you know up. So it's like kind of crazy, you know what I'm saying? So it's like one of those things. Um, you know he had a success with that first album, but then also. He was like one of those things that, you know, he was kind of like the um, the butt of all jokes because um, you had another MC that was part of Cold Chillin' Records uh, by the name of The Genius before he became The Jizzer. Um, he had an album out called um, The Words From The Genius that was produced solely by um, Easy Mo B when Easy Mo B was just starting out and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Like, um, he's been around since like the late 80s because he did um, stuff for Big Daddy Kane on the it's a big daddy thing album check that album the review for the album that i did but anyways um so jizza um you know he had um called i guess it was from the genius he had a song called um come do me um and you know it wasn't really uh successful because you know he wasn't really trying to do a song like that because he was like more of a street level kind of cat um you know has songs like drama um life of a drug dealer you know has songs like that that was like more of a song that I guess that was kind of compromised because him being a coach on records, yeah, he got the the, the <laughs> got the brace itching, you know what I'm saying? You know, y'all y'all all my people that got braids, y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, so he dropped that. The album wasn't really successful, and that kind of thing. You know, Jizzle was kind of salty about that. You know, about the the album not being successful, and then you know, lo and behold, '92. You know, Wu Tang Wu Tang came out with "Protect Your Neck," which actually today is the 30th anniversary of that legendary single. And what the reason I bring this up is because he had a line on the album on, on that song. It's pretty much like the last verse. There was like the line when he said, "First of all, who's your Aaron or a mountain climber who plays an electric guitar, but he don't know the meaning of dope when he's looking for a suit, tire, rap that's clean of a bar of soap." I'm the dirtiest thing in sight. Matter of fact, bring out the girls and let's have a mud fight. So the two, the suit and tie rap, he's getting at Granddaddy IU. So, because, you know, he was doing that. Like I said, smooth assassin. 
So he was doing that on, on his album cover. You see him like, you know, on the staircase and things like that. You see the, you know, all the get up and shit looking dapper. You know what I mean? So definitely ahead of his time. So shout out to his mans that did that. And then, so, fast forward, you know, 1992, uh, Roxy and Shantae, she actually dropped an album called, um, uh, The Bitch is Back, same year, 92, for Culture and Records. Oh, I think it was, like, Living Large. I think she dropped on Living Large, right? And she had a song called Big Mama. So, Granddaddy at You ghost wrote the lyrics for the album, so for that song. So, he wrote the lyrics and he wrote the, he made the beat, too, him and KC. Um, oh, and then let me let me fast forward to let me backtrack with Smooth Assassin. There was a lot of issues uh, with production credit because they said like Bismarck he did the production. Um, Granddaddy used to say that that's bullshit. That it was really Cool V, you know his producer uh, Bismarck he's the producer uh, Casey and Granddaddy U that pretty much did the production. So pretty much what he did was like he would bring the records that he had from his mom's. In their mom's collection, have you know the engineer kind of get the parts that they want from that record and loop it up, and that's how they made the songs. It's like almost like pause tapes, almost like that. And then that's how they made the beats and things like that. So I just had to throw that out there before I forgot because I almost forgot to mention that. But anyways, getting back to Big Mama, um, that song very um controversial. Um, you know, she you know, she took shots at like you know, Queen Latifah, um. Yo Yo, MC Light, you know, pretty much all the dope female MCs at the time that was popping at that time in like nine, in the early nineties. So, Tretch of Naughty by Nature, he got pissed off because Queen Latifah put on Naughty by Nature. He got put on by them, you know what I mean? And then so he actually um, I think they kind of got into it like in, in the streets and things like that, in the clubs and whatever the case may be. And I heard some stories. I'm not gonna get. It. I'm not gonna put that put that out there in the universe to put out. Um, but then, because of that, Naughty by Nature came out their second album with um, 1993, another dope album. So there was a song called "The Hood First, First The Hood Come First. One of my it's probably my favorite song. I would say that song, and it's on on my favorite songs of the album. So there was a line that it was like the last verse by Tretch, um, when he said, um, you played the pose and boats, we came to roast. Are we even? If you're still breathing, we ain't even close. I owe you, drop the O, drop your whole sugar-free flow. You want to ride a disc, you should have made it so we never know. Yeah, so, and he said, now we do, now you do, the Flavor Crew is after you. Yeah, so that right there, that was a shot towards um, Granddaddy IU. And he also made it, uh, uh, on the second verse, he has to take a track. Um, he has to take a shot at Roxanne Chante when he said, "Hearing there's a horny girl back, um, getting back at rap. She's screaming. She's a mom and Mac licking tracks for cracks. There's only one queen, Queen Latifah. That's that. You name your know, your days when I was bitching and other twenty on your back. Now you want you got Jack. If you just wanted the flavor, your whole news is coming back. So that right there, that's a whole shot towards um, Roxanne Chante. So." So there's a lot of, you know, going back and forth with that, right? So, boom. All right? So that was 93. So, 93 going to 94, Granddaddy U starts working on the album. So, it's kind of t in the turmoil with Cold Chill and Records, a lot of bullshit politics. So, um, Cold Chill and Records pretty much um, kind of got defuncted in a way. Oh, they got dropped by Warner, Re uh, Warner Brothers um, Music because they were... They were um, they were part of Warner Brothers music. Um, but because of everything that was going on, you know, with um, Ice-T and all that shit, that kind of affected them, um, that kind of thing. Um, there was a song that um, that Granddaddy, you said in the interview, he did a song called something about the execution of a morgue. Some, something, something to that degree. Um, it, it's on Uncut.com. You know, just check the interview he did with, with Uncut. And so they actually had a video... Oh, no, excuse me. I'm sorry. They actually, um, so, Cold Chillin' got dropped with Warner Brothers Records. He, so, with that, he actually, um, I'm trying to think. What was it? What he said again? Okay, yeah, so, Epic Records had brought them out, brought out Cold Chillin'. 
But Epic Records being, you know, Sony, Epic, you know, that kind of thing, they actually had a, a, a sub label called Epic Street, which was kind of like an experimentation of Epic Records. So it was prom- it's pretty much like their urban, their urban um, subdivision record label, pretty much like hip hop acts, R&B acts, and things like that. So Granddaddy IU um, with this album was pretty much like the guinea pig of Epic um, Epic Street. A lot of dope classic releases came out of Epic Street. Um, this album being included, um, the first three MCA albums, uh, We Come Strapped, Death, um, Death Threats, and um, Last Man Standing, uh, Ghostface, um, Iron Man, my favorite Iron Man, uh, my favorite Ghostface album, his best album, my personal opinion. Uh, What's another album? Oh, The Pillage by Capadonna. It's another album that came out of... Um, out of uh, what's that? Um, out of Epic Street and a couple other stuff. It only lasted for like five years. It got defunct in '98 and that kind of thing. So get into this album. Um. So during the making of this album, um, like I said, they uh, developed Epic Street, and there was a guy that was working with Cold Chillin Records. I think he was kind of like the A and R of Epic Street or whatever the case may be. And so you would think like you know. You know, him having, you know, rapport with Granddaddy, you, Coach Chillin, they family. So, with the making this album, pretty much, um, the album was poorly promoted. You know, it wasn't promoted very well. Um, didn't sell very well. There was a lot of bullshit politics. And so, you know, Granddaddy, you pretty much fucking shunned that dude. You know, um, he got so pissed, like, he actually threw the chair. <laughs> he threw the chair at that dude for nothing. For not the, for the album not being promoted right, and they, that kind of fucked him up. Not only that, but because with his beef with um Tretch, you know Tretch having um Paul, you know with Queen Latifah's um influence and that kind of thing, kind of he kind of got blackballed in a sense, you know what I mean? So kind of fucked him up on that part. Um and you know I spoke to Granddaddy you on Facebook up years ago, you know about this album. And um, I remember him saying, like, you know, he didn't really like this album. And he didn't really got into the reasons why. But on the uncut video that I mentioned, the interview that he did, he, he explains that. So pretty much he said he pretty much did the same thing. But obviously he said it better. But, um, yeah, man. Um, so let's get into the album. Got two singles, uh, Represent and um, Don't Stress Me. Those are the two singles of the album. Um yeah, represent is dope. We got the Gats. So that song, we got the Gats. Dope song, one of my favorite songs of the album. That song, he's going at um, Tretch. Uh, there was a line on the. It was the first verse. Um, the, the end of the first verse when he says, um, "What he said? Okay, he says because the blood flow, the blood, the cause the blood blood flows thick when slug goes straight through your back from the three eight thirty eight snub nose." Think you some type of thug or mugger because you got a head full of gas and a little full of slugger. Well, I got something more fat. It's called a gat. And you can't beat that with a baseball bat. So take your corny ass home before I get vexed and put the tech in your dome. Now what's up, nigga? So obviously that's a shot towards um, Tretch because everybody knows that back in the, in the, in the, early, in the early 90s, he was, all, he, was, you know, he was all about the chain and he had the baseball bat. So, you know, that was a shot towards him. So that kind of thing. So... Yeah, that's how to throw it out there. Um, don't stress me. Um, you know, blast a new hassle. That's my shit. Dead man, don't talk. Take it from the top. Um, yeah, the whole album is dope. Another thing too that I um, before I forgot to mention, um, the reason why um, he came with this approach was because when he first started with the Smooth Assassin album. He's gotten a lot of comparisons to Rakim, and that would piss him off, like, you know what I mean? And because of that, he wanted to get away from that, you know, and then and then, and then that's why he came about with that. I can see the, 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 you know, the vocal tones, but, you know, a little bit, but not too much. They have, like, the, it's totally different, you know what I mean? But maybe it's a Long Island action or something like that, him being from Hempstead, um, Rakim being from Wine Dance or Crime Dance. You know what I'm saying? But um, this is a very underrated album. Very dope. Like I said, it didn't sell very well. Uh, I think it came out like in the summer of 94. Um, but we listened to it. Definitely has like a more winter, fall feel to it. You know what I'm saying? Um, just like that hoodie, hoodie weather music. So 
it kind of fell flat, you know, at, at that time. You know, like I said, it was poorly promoted. And uh, you got to remember, this is 1994, so gangster rap was on an all-time rise at that time. So, you know, you had, um, you know, Biggie's uh, Ready to Die. Well, it didn't come out yet. But, you know, his singles was, you know, popping. Then you had Nas Illmatic. You had Wu-Tang. Then you had the West Coast um, fucking reigning supreme. So this kind of got kind of like, you know, sh overshadowed. And um, it's to the point that Granddaddy, you hated this album. He fucking hates it. Like, he has a he has a, um, a band camp where he shows all of his albums except for this album. He did, he like, disregard, he, he disowns this album. That's like, like, that's how crazy it is, man. But, um, it's a dope album. I think it's underrated. It's an album that I really hear people talk about. It's an album that, you know, has like that boop, that, that, you know, boom bap, you know, straight rugged, grimy, gritty, um, you know, fucking champion hoodies, car hut, jackets, you know what I'm saying? Like, lace up your Tim boots and things. Yo, I fucking love this album, man. Is it a classic? I would say it's a personal classic. I don't know if it's an overall classic, but I think it's a personal classic to me. Um, but it's a dope album, man. Um, it's been a while since I heard the album, but I got to re-listen to it. But I do remember songs like Represent, Who We Got the Gats, Don't Stress Me, Blast a New Asshole, What I'm Up, don't, Dead Men Don't Talk. Um, Granddaddy AU, like I said, and his brother KC did all the production on the album, except for a guy named Big Snow. But yeah, overall dope album. If you can find it, definitely pick it up. Um, it is out of print. It goes for a little bit of money. I've seen it go for like thirty dollars and up. Uh, Smooth Assassin, forget about it. You're not gonna spend. You, you'll be paying at least fifty to sixty dollars and up. So, um, but yeah, Granddaddy You, Lead Pipe, released in 1994. Recipes to Granddaddy Are You, man. Your legacy lives on. Thank you for entertaining the world. We miss you. We love you. And the hip hop heads, we love you, man. So. I, I do, man. So, rest in peace. Peace.